To practice divination magic is to seek knowledge of self and future. The self is ever-changing, and therefore, the future is always changing too. Many of the tools we use as witches have the ability to help us tap into ourselves, to peel away the layers of consciousness to the unconscious self and see signs of the future to come. So today, come with me as we explore ways to read your future. Oh, and I almost forgot. My name is Heather Lynn, and I am the Wild Woodland Witch. Oh, and I'm so excited because today is a collaboration with the Stitching Witch, and I will talk more about her videos later on. Bones are part of both of our practices, and if you're intrigued by this kind of magic, I will be sharing more. For now, settle in, and let's begin. Let's start with the core of the art of divination. Psychic energy and intuitive energy. Here we are making an herbal infusion to help the practitioner prior to engaging in divination by using plants to settle the nervous system and calm the mind. When the mind is calm, the subconscious can awaken. This infusion is topped with a sigil to sit on the brewing potion overnight. The sigil is made with the consonants from the word nourish. Just look at this green color. As a green witch, I feel alive when I see this color. This combo is red clover for divine awakening of psychic energy. Oat straw for calming the nervous system and getting the nerves out of the way and peppermint for a sharp and wakeful mind. A good way to create the perfect blended tea for tea leaf reading is to infuse your own energy into the brew by blending your own tea. This makes the reading far more personal. Here I am creating a few variations to give myself a chance to vote for my perfect blend. I am looking for flavor and shape ability to create shape as I am making this for divination. I also love chai tea. It is super yummy. My favorite is also adding a little bit of peppermint. I find it also adds interesting shapes too, but my favorite is using twigs because then I can see patterns as well as shapes. Once I pick the blend, I brew the pot and pour. The tea sits for a time and I sip away until it's all gone. Then I turn the cup without a handle on over a small plate, shake a few times, and voila, magnifique. And it's time to space out and stare into the leaves. You can also use coffee for this, and a similar feeling or experience you are trying to create is how you feel when you are looking at clouds, which is actually another form of divination. After a good cup of tea, it's time to visit the greatest giver of signs that I know, the forest. I start the walk with a quick spell to set some intentions, a bowl, some of my infusion made with fire, earth from the roots of the plants around me, and the plants themselves, in this case pine, and a bit of water. I whisper in my desires to see, and the walk begins. I love forest divination. It's just so simple and easy and so accessible. Well, if you live near a forest, there's so many different tools that we can use, yes, Sometimes those are necessary, but sometimes just going for a walk and just seeing what you see and kind of being open. Hi, you are sweet. To signs and symbols. I mean, it's just sort of nonstop for me as a witch. So I, if you're a witch, you probably completely uh, have this happening on the regular basis. 
And in fact, if you do, please tell me your stories. It's so affirming for all of us that like, we're not crazy. <laughs> we're magical, amazing beings. And we have so many gifts. Oh, if you're not subscribed, please do so. It is so, so easy. You just click the notification bell and you're in. You are a wild one as that beautiful husky. So one of the things that I like to do is just go into the forest and have an experience. Not only is it super healthy and just revitalizing for the spirit, but there's also signs and symbols everywhere. And if you don't have a forest, you can do this in a city, you can do this in a park, you can do this anywhere. Just go out into the world and see what you see. It's kind of like a tea reading. Um, you're just kind of intuiting things. You might see animals, you might see plants, you might see symbols. For me, I like to tune into the forest because the forest has a very specific type of energy that I just understand. I speak forest language. Yeah, it's just an amazing experience just to realize how capable we are as witches. All witches can do this. Some level of psychic ability is within us. And sometimes we feel like, oh, well, I don't really have that. And that may be the truth. That may not be your main gift but it definitely is there. We all have an intuitive side. It's just a matter of finding the right key and unlocking the door. Now, it's no secret that I use bones in my own magic, in my craft. And you've, if you've been around my channel before, you've seen how I incorporate bones into my craft, mainly through folk magic. And now I wanna show you my bone kit that I've been working on and it is finally complete after many months. The bones were found over the summer, they were dried, flesh needed to be removed, and I needed to use the oven to work all of the materials off. I also cleansed them with salt and did a salt scrub, and then I used a Dremel, which is a tool, to shape them. I created the base, for the divination that I'm about to engage in out of walnut, which I harvested locally. I use a wood burning tool to carve with a special blend of oils to enchant the base. And I recommend some of these oils for you in the description. Here are my bones. I have seven of them. Five are chicken bones and two of them are squirrel bones. Seven is a powerful number. And before we throw them, I wanted to invite you to explore a modern practice that uses bones besides my own. Today's video collaboration is with The Stitching Witch, and I invite you to check out her video on bone magic in her craft. Becca has a strong following on many platforms, and she has a Patreon too. She is an excellent guide for those who are interested in hearth hedge or deity magic. So definitely check her out. She is one to follow and one to watch. And now let's do the honors together and throw these bones for the very first time. Here you can see how a seeker of knowledge can ask for a yes or no answer and the bones will share the answer. I also use the two spots below for a maybe to help me gain clarity because sometimes there is unknowable factors and I need to make room for that. And my kit also has personal items. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but a lot of people use personal tokens versus bones or they mix it with their bones. In my case, I have kind of two separate things going on. My bones, because I am a new student to bone throwing, are being used for only yes and no. And my kit that I've used in the past, which is something I'm more comfortable with, is used for in-depth of knowledge. The following is a bunch of tools used in divination with a quick overview for you. If you're like me, you're probably interested in them all. But let's think about this. Which one is calling to you right now? In a way, this video now has become divination for you. Use and tap in and practice using your intuition. Do any of these items call to you? 
do you have on any of these items already? Do they need to be dug out and used? Or do you need to purchase one? Let's see, your future awaits. If you want a yes or a no answer easily, a pendulum is an enchanted item that can bring you a glimpse into a simple yes or no answer that will help you ultimately make your own decisions. You likely already know the answers to the questions, but they are buried down below doubt, fear, and worry. Emotions can cloud the mind, but the pendulum clears away all the fog. She can help one rise and tap in to the truth of the subconscious mind. The cards are shuffled. The energy within one expressed. Intuition calls the card forth and the ideas of the future are now cast. The experience of the reading can be enough to see the future, alter the future, or ready yourself for the future. Welcome to Oracle Cards. This is actually the journey, uh, journey into the Hidden Realm by Barbara Moore. The art is actually by Julia Jeffrey. And um, I, I'm in love with this deck. I don't know if you... I actually am going to... I love it so much. I'm, I'm putting an Amazon um, link down below for you in case you want to purchase. It's really special. Uh, search your uh, cult store first. I actually did find it on Amazon, but ended up going to my cult store to get it because I, I like to support local before I go Amazon. But I will put the Amazon if you don't have an occult store nearby. That way you can check it out and see um, if it serves you. A cycle has been completed. <laughs> and tarot to each their own some feel strongly that oracle cards are not enough and it must be tarot but truth be told while tarot is the oldest of future telling cards it really truly is up to you these decks are not going to work more because they come from a past these decks are going to work because you are connected to them and when you connect yourself to the storytelling that the card tells the imagery, the art, and also the person who wrote the actual oracle tales. This is all pulling you in to choosing your correct deck. And like I said, it doesn't have to be tarot. It's whatever works for you. Rune stones are a fascinating oracle method. Ancient too, just like the cards, you build a relationship to their meanings. Runic is an alphabet, and runecraft was born from Germanic mysticism. I have the book written in the 1980s by Ralph Blum. Many love it, some look down upon it, and the reason is because there is an influence from the I Ching. I have my original cards from 20 years ago, but I also have a new set gifted to me and made out of deer bones. I find the bones to add another layer of connection for me. Rune stones have a history and they connect to Nordic and German traditions. So I suppose that is the reason why the Ralph Blum is not <laughs> necessarily looked up upon <laughs> as, uh, you know, the end all, but it is an American way of coming into runes and appreciating them and understanding them on a basic level. And there are so many great books on really coming into the deeper meaning behind runes, the history, and if you're interested in having me make a video on that, I would love to share more. And here lay the Celtic Ogham. I talked about these dice when I was first introduced to them by the owner of Modern Druid, who actually made these dice. Her information is below if you feel called to the set. She also makes the most powerful oils with the spirit of the trees, which basically the Ogham is connected to the spirit of the trees. It's very much Druid magic. Um, very much Celtic magic within the connection to the Ogham there is this ancestral knowledge of trees and I can attest to the potency of her oils they are really actually quite unique and I highly recommend them I will also link the video above where I tour a whole bunch of stores 
in my area and the surrounding area and I discover tons of amazing new witchy tools. If you want to check out that video, the link is above. The Ogum is an alphabet. Some scholars suggest the symbols were written as a cryptic shorthand language to exchange information. Another theory was it was created to have a unique alphabet to inscribe the Irish language because it was hard to translate to Latin. There are a few other theories out there as well, but modern Druidism uses them for divination, and it's unclear for how long Druids have used them for divination. Like the rune stones, it was a language repurposed for divination uses. And so which one of those called to you? I'd kind of love to hear from you about that and see who's attracted to what. Whatever tool you use, Wild Ones, don't let anyone tell you you're doing it wrong. From the tools you find and use to however you connect to your own intuition, that is for you to claim. You are you and you will know what works for you as you study, learn, and practice. You can but do not need to cleanse your tools. It's all about making your divination process yours. If you feel that you need to clean, cleanse your tools, do so. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you feel like you don't, then you don't need to do that. I hardly clean my tools. It's just not something I feel called to do on a regular basis. And that's why I wanted to talk about it here, just to say to each their own and your magic and the way you practice is valid. As you can see from the tools I have chosen to highlight here, these are the tools I go to the most. And Wild Ones, this is not even half of the tools you can access. There's so much more, and perhaps in the future I will do a part two. Make some suggestions in the comments, and I will include your ideas in future videos. And so blessings to your magic, Wild Ones. And thanks for swinging by for a little inspiration. And may your magic be whatever you need it to be for the witchy life you are living now. And come and find me again.